you're probably wondering, why is he taking so long to appear in the video? And that's because... There is no video! I lied! The whole channel is a lie! <laughs> okay, but seriously, I kind of lost my camera's memory card. So, no memory card means no video of me. Just pictures. Anyway, when I was a little kid, I remember me, my two older brothers, and my cousin would get together and play on our family's computer. We were known as that one cool family down the street with a computer. During this time, I remember one of the best games I played was Mega Man X5. And you could play as two characters in this game. Mega Man X, which was your beginner friendly character, and my favorite, Zero. Because he has a sword. And I remember the character animations on this game were so nice and crispy. Just... And on my last video, I said I'd be setting up the animations for our character. If you haven't watched it, there'll be a link in the description. Since the inspiration behind this project was Celeste, I wanted to use their character animations. But I couldn't find any. So then I thought, maybe I'll use Katana Zero's character animations. Those are pretty cool as well. But still, no luck. But then, while I was looking for the Katana Zero's animations, I saw this massive sprite sheet for Zero from Mega Man X5. So that's what I'll be using for the rest of this project. Since we're working with sprite sheets, first thing we're gonna do is slice the image so that we can create the animation. After you've downloaded the sprite sheet and loaded it into Unity, you'll want to select it and set sprite mode to multiple and hit apply. Then open up the sprite editor. You can slice it manually by selecting each sprite like this, but if you are big brain like me, you're gonna want to select the automatic option and click slice. And voila! Easy! Don't forget to click apply. Also, don't forget to rename the individual sprites of the animations you'll be using. Alright, now that we have the individual sprites, it's time to actually create the animations. First select the player, then go over to Window, Animation and select Animation. Then you'll want to click Create to create a new animation for a player, create a folder called Animations where you keep all of them, and our first animation will be the idle. Then we'll select the idle animation sprites and drag them into the animation window. This is where we'll make our animations. For me, the character is too small, so I'm going to scale him up a bit. And inside the sprite renderer, I'll make the color white. Make sure to reset the box collider component so that it's the same size as the sprite. And inside the sprite renderer, replace the box sprite with the first frame of his idle animation. Also adjust the ground collision variables. I adjusted these values even more to fit the character better. And now, if you try playing the animation, we can see that it's really fast. This is because our sample rate, which is sort of a images per second value, is way too small. To change it, first go over to these three dots in the animation window, and make sure the show sample rate option is activated. If we give it a higher value, now the animation runs properly. But you can notice that he kind of gets displaced on one of the sprites. To fix this, go to the sprite editor and make sure the sprites have the same width and height and make sure they are well selected. And that's it! First animation done! While I'm at it, I'm also going to create the other animations for our character. But I couldn't find the sprites for our run. Our run! So I downloaded another sprite sheet that contained the running sprites. But I have to use both because one has the run and the other has the idle. None have both! Anyway, if you're interested in these sprites, there'll be a link in the description. So then I created the animations for our run, jump, fall and landing. Now that you've created all of your animations and stored them inside the single folder, you'll find a different file in that folder that you didn't create. Double click it and it will open up the animator tab. Here is where we'll be setting up the transitions between each animation. Before we begin, we should know that there are some animations that are supposed to loop and some that aren't. I believe that at the moment the only animations that shouldn't loop are the jump, fall and landing. If we select jump here in the menu, over by the inspector there's an option called loop time. Disable it. Do this for the fall and landing as well. And now it won't loop. You'll see it once it's set up. Ok, so when do we idle in our game? When we're grounded and we're not moving. Exactly. Over by the animator window, open the parameters tab and create a new ball. Call it is grounded. And a float called horizontal direction. First, let's organize this menu a bit. This orange arrow points to your initial animation. 
If you don't have it, simply right click on your initial animation and select set as default state. In my case, it already is the default state, so it is grayed out. Now let's set up our transitions. Our first transition will be from the idle to run. So right click on idle and select make transition and left click on run. Since this is a two-way animation, do the same thing from run to idle. Now select one of the transition arrows and disable has exit time. Do the same thing for the other arrow. By disabling it, we're saying that the next animation can play before the current one finishes. So some animations need this, but our run and idle don't. So every transition from run and idle shouldn't have exit time. Now we need to add conditions in order to play these animations. Select the transition arrow from idle to run, click the plus button to add a new condition. First one will be is grounded is true and add another condition for horizontal direction greater than zero. Let's set up the conditions from run to idle. Again, it will be is grounded true and horizontal direction equals zero. But since there is no equals condition, we'll add another condition and say horizontal direction less than 0.1. Then we need to change these values inside our code. When we started making our animations, this animator component was added to our player. This is what controls our animations. We'll create a reference to it in our code. Now we can change the parameter values. Since those values are a direct reference to the ones in the script, all we have to do is assign them in the update function. And now we can idle and run. But we can also moonwalk when going to the left. To fix this, we have to create a bool variable called facing right. And whenever we are facing right and press left, we flip our character, and vice versa. Since I want these animations feeling snappy, I also turned off the fixed duration on the transitions and set the transition duration to zero. When we jump, we could be in any animation, idle, run, or even fall. So instead of creating transitions from all of these states, we can use any state, and all we have to do is give the condition. For that, we'll create a bool parameter called is jumping, then we'll create another bool parameter called is falling. Whenever is jumping is true, we transition to our jump animation. For our fall animation, once our y velocity is less than zero, our fall animation will play. And finally, we'll use the is grounded parameter we created before to play our landing animation. Inside our code, when our jump function is called, is jumping will be true and is falling will be false. And when our y velocity is less than zero, is falling will be true and is jumping will be false. And finally, when we're grounded, both parameters will be false. We should set up the conditions for the other transitions. Remove exit time, fix duration, and set transition duration to zero on all of them. Except from landing to idle. Here, just set the transition duration to zero and remove fixed duration. Leave exit time on. Now for the conditions. From any state to jump, you'll want is jumping true. From any state to fall, you'll want is falling true. From fall to landing, you'll want is grounded true. And from landing to idle, you'll leave it as it is. For the jump and fall transition, uncheck can transition to self to allow it to restart without a problem. And when we test, I don't know what this is, but it's kind of hot. All right, talk about an upgrade, am I right? We went from cube to epic robot boy with a friggin' lightsaber, my G. Who can jump? Speaking about jumping, next time we meet, I'll show you how to get your jump feeling juice. Also, I want to take this time and thank everyone who showed my first video so much support. Family, friends, acquaintances, and everyone in between. I hope you liked the video. Literally. Seriously man, like the video. Just do it, no one's looking. And also, smash that subscribe button to really mess up with the YouTube algorithm. And stay fresh, I guess.